um, maybe also looking historically uh, for for centuries you could say this corridor has existed uh, maybe even longer um, is it at a certain moment when you look at the changes in mobility the way you already hinted towards that it comes as a cost particularly in this day and age uh, with this enormous amount of, uh, of uh, mo movements that are going on around this corridor um, is it is it not almost impossible to change something which is so much rooted in in history and has such a long historical uh, um, momentum already going on and, and 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 how would you how would you look at that is there not a very large past dependency from from such a big structure yes of course there is and i think there's no intention to change that i mean people have settled along the rhine for centuries and there has been trade there has been development, economic development, cultural development along the corridor. I mean, nothing to be uh, underestimated and it's still going on. And of course, there are different interests at play and there is a huge conflict of interest also. That's why we have to also spread our topics and rephrase maybe our strategy in the future because it's becoming very complex and very hard to understand what's going on on all the different levels and scales along the corridor. But this is, I think, on the one hand, it's our time, but historically given there is a strong connection to this path and strong connection to this corridor and also from the people and the different organizations working on the Rhine Alpine Corridor and working on the Rhine on the waterway, it's also a connecting element and it helps cross border collaboration to, to work. And I think this is a proof of it. Why else would 26 members work together? I mean, it's a it's a beginning it's marking a new time a new era of collaboration i think and this is something we have to push forward and also really break it down to proper projects that help the corridor functioning mm 